on how to improve a lipid practice in a physician's office. Five things to do. The NMR liposcience uh, is a test for all the particles in the blood that are arthrogenic. The uh, C-reactive protein high sensitivity is for inflammation. The CAC is a calcium score on a CT machine, either EBCT or Siemens a rapid slice. The CIMT is not the, tr the traditional carotid ultrasound, but the actual ultrasound of the wall thickness. And then finally, use combination therapy. Medi Medicare does pay for uh, the NMR liposcience profile. Uh, usually uh, three times a year is a recognized practice. If uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is not paying for it in the coming years, uh, so far it's $80 for private pay. LDL particle number is included in this and it is the best predictive test event. Look at the offspring trial uh, data and the Framingham uh, nested perspective trial data. Uh, it provides data for all arthrogenic particles. For example, no other test will give you the VLDL data to see if that is off. Uh, it also gives you the size of the LDL, which is uh, somewhat useful. However, apparently, if the particle number is at goal, you don't need to worry too much about the size, as large size LDL particles are present in uh, familial hyperlipoproteinemia, which uh, causes uh, great disease. Uh, this test is so critically important because it corrects the discordance with the LDL test, which is what we have used in the past. I think it's really important to get a test for inflammation. Uh, Tim Russert died because uh, his uh, inflammation uh, made his plaque unstable and this vulnerable plaque then uh, ruptured and caused sudden death. For stroke, uh, these ruptured plaques uh, embolize up into the brain from the carotids and cause strokes. So if we could take care of the inflammation, uh, we can uh, make sure the patient is safer. Again, Medicare pays for both of these tests. Uh, I like both these tests. Apparently, recently, there's been some uh, trouble with the LP plaque test, but hopefully that'll get better. I alternate between the two tests. If the LP plaque is abnormal, I can get that three times a year. Otherwise, if it's uh, normal, I only get it once a year. Uh, so after I get a normal LP plaque, the next time in four months, I'll get a C-reactive protein uh, high uh, sensitivity. Uh, the interesting thing in my practice is I find these studies are almost always normal as I usually have my patients on statins. However, uh, it is important to note that fish oil plus statin decreases C-reactive protein high sensitivity by 70%, so you want to make sure your patients are on both these things. This is the best test to break through denial. Uh, some patients uh, really are resistant to taking statins, but once I show them that they have plaque and that any plaque can rupture and cause death, as with Tim Russert, I can usually get them to uh, start working with me to find a statin that they can tolerate. Uh, secondly, I think it's uh, important uh, to recognize that even though uh, everybody seems to have uh, disease, there are some patients who have uh, zero calcium scores even at age 90 in my practice. However, I do go on to get CIMTs in these patients. Uh, you, do, you do not use these tests to uh, show regression because theoretically the calcium does not leave the wall, but you certainly can use it uh, every five years to monitor progression. However, uh, be careful about this because of the radiation risk. Indeed, uh, the angio uh, calcium, uh, pardon me, uh, the angio Siemens test a rapid slice has fallen somewhat out of favor because of the high uh, radiation risk. The uh, single, uh, pardon me, the uh, calcium score, however, has much less radiation risk than that, even though it's the same machine. Uh, and if the score is greater than one, then the patient has plaque. Uh, if it's greater than 400, uh, then get a cardiology consult and uh, let them worry about that. Uh, in my practice, I almost I don't think I've ever had a positive nuclear stress test in someone who had a, a score greater than 400 without chest pain. But still, I think it's something for the cardiologist to take care of. A uh, score of zero previously was said to be a 99.6% uh, uh, likelihood of not having an event in three years. 
However, if you smoke, that's not true. And uh, there are many uh, testimonials that people with zero C, uh, calcium scores still have events. Uh, this is because they do have soft plaque that's not calcified yet. I do uh, like the CIMT because it's ultrasound and it's safe and we can uh, repeat it frequently to monitor progression and regression of disease. Uh, I, I use it if the calcium score is positive in order to monitor this disease. I use it if the calcium score is zero to uh, see if there's a disease that is not picked up in the heart. Uh, to see if there's disease in the carotid. If there's disease in the carotid, there is probably soft plaque in the heart that is not seen by the calcium score. So I think these tests are complementary and should both be used. Um, the uh, doctor in my area, Dr. Steve Watkins, who brought this uh, modality uh, to our uh, region, is Dr. Steve Watkins, and I'd uh, like to thank him. Uh, and he put the price at $100. Uh, insurance is not uh, paying for this, and this is a price uh, just about anybody can afford. I think combination therapy is really the way to go bec uh, for safety and for efficacy. Uh, a high dose of statins are safe, especially with Lipitor, as in the TNT trial. However, I think uh, that since you only get a 6% decrease by uh, increasing your uh, statin from moderate to highest dose while just adding a thousand milligrams of niacin uh, will decrease the LDL by 12 percent so here you get double the effect with uh, much less risk. Uh, simvastatin 80 milligrams I think is high risk uh, in terms of developing rhabdomyolysis. Uh, if uh, disease is present or if there is pl uh, plaque in the coronaries with the calcium score positive or atheromas in the carotids with a thick uh, uh, CIMT. I like to be very aggressive and get the LDL particle number less than 750 uh, in order to uh, show regression. However, uh, I think uh, depending on the doctor's judgment, if he's uh, satisfied with an LPL uh, less than 1,000, we will uh, leave it to the doctor's judgment. However, the new guidelines are coming out and I suspect they may only use APOB levels. APOB levels uh, monitor all the atherogenic particles in that uh, chylomicrons, uh, intermediate uh, density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, and very low density lipoproteins. These all have APOB uh, particles on them, so theoretically you are measuring all the APOB particles. However, uh, if the patient has low uh, size or small size, low uh, high density uh, particles, uh, LDL, which really is most of my practice, as most of my pa pa practice does have metabolic uh, syndrome patients, then apparently it distorts the configuration of the molecule and the uh, immunoassay test uh, gives you a false uh, low number. So what happens is that the uh, apitope, if I'm saying that right, on the antibody can't find the epitope on the uh, LDL because of the change of configuration in the small dense uh, molecule. This is why I like the NMR uh, liposcience test.